Good morning, everybody, and we at Parker would like to welcome you to PitCon 2014. I'm Jim Monick, I'm one of the engineering managers for Parker Hannaford Corporation, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about electromechanical drivetrains and the selection process. If any of you uh, designed in uh, linear motion into your products before, you know it's a real balancing act of getting the right technology to meet the, the right uh, factors needed in your application. So there's a lot of confusion about which product to select. And I'm going to try to make that a little bit easier. So where do we start? Well, I like to remember things through acronyms. And in this case, I use the acronym PETS, which stands for the precision of your drivetrain, the expected life you need out of it, the throughput you need out of it, and some special considerations. Now, from a precision standpoint, there are four factors that you have to uh, consider when selecting your drivetrain. Resolution, repeatability, accuracy, and velocity. And we'll go into each one of those in comparison to the drivetrains that are uh, commonly available. From an expected life standpoint, again, four major factors to deal with. Mechanical efficiency, the wear resistance of the device, contamination resistance, and the maintenance of it. And from a throughput standpoint, how fast you have to get your process done, you need to consider the speed capacity. How fast can your drivetrain actually produce motion? The maximum acceleration. The frequency response, which is somewhat confusing to most people because this has to do with the spring rate or stiffness of the drivetrain and how quickly it can respond to change requests. And the duty cycle. How long can this, uh, the drivetrain run without a rest? So from a special consideration standpoint, there are four factors to deal with. Force density, if you need to produce a, a, a lot of uh, force in a small contained area, there are different drivetrains you want to look at, uh, especially for the mechanical advantage. The material cost, we all have to maintain our costs and keep them within check to the value that the drivetrain adds to the process. Implementation cost, which is sometimes forgotten about because in some cases the material cost is uh, over uh, shattered by actually implementing the technology. And then travel length. There are some limitations certain, uh, certain drivetrains have on how far they can travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of those factors and we're going to compare these five most common technologies uh, for drivetrains against them. Uh, the first being ball screws, which is basically a threaded rod that has a, a nut that has been loaded with ball bearings that recirculate to improve the efficiency of the drivetrain. Lee screw, which is a, the predecessor to ball screws, uh, which is basically just a threaded rod and a nut, and the nuts come with different materials, with uh, spring-loaded uh, preloads and things like that. Timing belts, which is a specialized belt that have cogs on them that allow them to be sunk uh, in sync with uh, a pulley. Rack and pinions, which is a linear gear. It's a, it's a metal gear that's linear in shape and a spur that runs up back and forth, which pr produces linear motion. And then linear motors. Now, these first four, they're all rotational to linear conversion devices. So they take a rotary motor and they convert it to linear motion. The linear motor, on the other hand, is a direct device. So it takes electrical energy, puts it into a, a what's known as a forcer, which can, can move directly without uh, any rotational conversion, no mechanical element. So we're going to compare those five to those uh, considerations we talked about. 